Hello and welcome. Today we're working on how to calculate net present value or NPV and internal rate of return which is IRR. We're going to calculate this with a simple problem so let's get started. Now we're evaluating the capital project. The cost of the project is $200,000. Now I've set up all we need is we need year zero one through five. So our net cash flows for year zero is a negative $200,000. Now we have positive cash flows, net cash flows of 80,000, 70. Let me type these in here. 80,000, 70,000 for year two, 60,000 for year three, 50,000 and 20,000. All right, so those are our net cash flow years. I'm gonna make it dollar sign so it's easy to read and commas and everything. Now we need a discount rate. So the discount rate is 11%, 0.11 is the decimal format. We're going to make this a percentage. So we're going to say if we discount all the cash flows at 11%, compare it to the initial cost, if it's positive, net present value is positive, then we would accept. All right, so let's do net present value. So NPV, and then we'll do the rate is 11% and then the comma, and we'll do a range. All these positive numbers is our range. So this is gonna be the net pre the present value of the cash flows, and then we need to subtract out the 200,000. Since it's already negative, then I'm just gonna add, so add the 200,000, and we're gonna net out our present value minus our cost, and we end up with 17,000, 562. So it's positive. So what that means is the present value of these cash flows is 200 plus the 17,000. So 217,000 is the present value. The net present value is if you subtract out the 200,000. So that's 17,562. So we would accept. Based on this, we would accept. Let's look at the internal rate of return. The net present value deals with dollars and the internal rate of return just works with what is the rate of return built into the cash flows. We assume equal periods and that's what we have. We have five years with the beginning of the first year and then the end of year one we receive 80,000. So the formula is IRR and we just plug in the cash flows starting with the negative 200,000 all the way through year five and we end up with something around 15%. Let's do this. So it's 15.12% is our internal rate of return. Both of these would say accept. So here we have the discount rate is 11% and we've returned 15%, so yes, we would accept. Now, what if we change not the cash flows, what if we change the discount rate? What if our discount rate we were happy with 9%. What would happen to our net present value? And what happens to our internal rate of return? Net present value would go up or down. Net present value would go up. Internal rate of return would stay the same. Net present value went from, what was it, 17 to 27,000. So because the, we're discounting only at 9%, the net present value goes up the internal rate of return is not affected by the discount rate. The net present value is affected by the discount rate. What if we made it 15%? What if the discount rate was 15%? Net present value goes toward zero, it goes smaller when you increase the discount rate. Internal rate of return is 15.12. Now, what if we made the discount rate the exact rate as the internal rate of return? Well that's the point where net present value is zero. We technically would accept we require a 15.12% rate of return. Uh, I guess you would get that rate of return if you got exactly that and the internal rate of return. What if our discount rate was 18%? Well, it's negative net present value, but our internal rate of return is still a 15%, 15 15.12% rate of return. So this is how you do net present value and internal rate of return using Excel. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. I've got more on capital budgeting, so check those out.